Guys, what is the one thing that you would tell or teach to your younger self if you could go back and talk to the 20-year-old you right now? Let me know what that is in the comments below, guys. So on this video, I want to give you 20 things that I would tell my former self if I could go back and talk to myself when I was 20 or 25 years old. Now, these are things that everybody should be doing if they're in their 20s and their 30s and they want to be wealthy or rich by the time they get to their 50s, right? So do me a favor, share this video with someone that you know needs to hear this information. Maybe it's a young person that's in their 20s or 30s or 40s. Now, listen, if you're 50 years old, this is still applicable because you still got 20 more years years to go more than likely. So there's something in this video for everybody of every age. Now with that said, let's go ahead and get into these 20 things. These are things you got to be doing in your 20s and 30s so that in your 50s and 60s, life is going to be much sweeter. Now, number one is this, invest and pay yourself first. Sounds cliche-ish, but it really matters, guys. At the top of every time you get paid, the top of your list of things to pay when you get paid, you know, you got food, you got giving, you got rent, and you got paying yourself, right? That's right up there at the very top because the old you has to eat. The old you has to pay rent. The old you has to pay utilities too. So be taking care of the old you every time you get paid right now. Pay yourself first now in your 20s, in your 30s, right? So that later on you got plenty of money. Number two is this. Pay off as much debt as you can as soon as you can, guys. Debt pulls from the money that you could be putting towards investing for your future. Debt pulls from the money that you could be putting towards any emergency money or any future large purchases that you want to make, right? Debt is a killer for your wealth, especially debt on things that's going down in value. So get rid of all of that consumer debt on things going down in value as soon as possible. Trust me, you'll thank me later. Roll it up into a debt snowball plan if you have to, but you want to get rid of it. Number three is simply live below your means, guys. Your means being your income. Instead of spending all the money that you make and bring in, make sure that your expenses are much less than your income. That's living below your means. And you want to do that because you want to create the cushion. And the cushion is what you can be putting towards your emergency savings or money that you could be putting towards future investing, right? So live below your means as much as possible and as far below as possible. And every time you get a raise or you make more money, you don't have to spend more money. Guys, if you get value from this video, please smash the like button below. And please consider subscribing to this channel if you're not already a subscriber. And also don't forget to share this video with your friends and your family. Now, number four is all of us have different jobs and different careers and things we do, right? But whatever you do, whatever your career choice or your job is, be the best at what you do. Become the best at what you do. Get very, very, very good at what you do. That's going to allow you to always have a job and have someone that's wanting your skills, but it's also going to allow you to earn more money when you're the best at what you do. If you're the best custodian of all the other custodians, you're going to get paid a little bit more money. If you're the best cook of all the other chefs, you're going to make more money. If you're the best attorney, you're going to make more money. No matter what it is, be the best at what you do. Number five is simply create and live according to a budget, a unique written monthly budget every single month. It's going to be your guardrails. It's going to be sort of your accountability, and it's going to create some discipline with your money. And it's also going to give you a measure of control and empowerment with your money as well. Now, number six is consider starting some type of business. And when I say starting some type of business, I'm talking about consider taking what you do well, maybe a hobby, something you do on the side that you love to do and consider monetizing it, right? Where you can actually make some money doing what you enjoy doing. It may be a skill set you have, a talent, a gift, whatever it is, consider starting a side business so that you can make some additional money and more income. Now, number seven is simply focus on your net worth a lot. A lot of folks always focus on their income and they sort of leave out the equation of their net worth. Net worth being your assets minus your liabilities. You want to focus on that because you want that to grow. That's a part of your future wealth. So you want to be honed in on what is your net worth. And I recommend checking your net worth at least a couple of times a year. 
just to see where you are. That little bit of focus and little bit of intentionality can go a long way in making that net worth grow in the right direction. Increasing assets, getting rid of the liabilities. Number eight is increase your reading. Take in more new information about personal finances, about investing, about real estate, whatever your interest is in terms of helping you gain money or get more money, increase your income. You need to be reading about those things, guys, on a regular basis, maybe a book a month, maybe two books a month, so that at the end of every year, you have 24 books worth of new knowledge about the topic of increasing your wealth, growing your money, increasing your income, increasing your investment portfolio, whatever it may be. But you need to be reading more non-fiction books about wealth building and investing on a regular basis. Number nine is simply make sure you have an emergency fund as soon as possible. That's three to six months of your monthly expenses. Whatever your monthly expenses are, whatever your needs are for the month, make sure you have three to six months as soon as possible saved up to cover yourself. Now, where you put that money doesn't really matter because you're not trying to gain on that money. You're just trying to have that money set to the side in case and when you need it. Now, number 10 is help as many people as possible. Give, give, and give. Guys, the more people you help, the more it comes back to you, right? The more people you give and help and plant seeds to as many people as possible, ultimately the better off life is going to be because you're giving, you're helping as many people as possible. Make giving an important part of your overall money management strategy. Number 11, guys, is simply cook way more at home. Don't do what the Joneses do, which is go to the restaurants, go out to eat every other day, and you're spending all this money on food when you can just get in the habit of cooking more at home. Sounds really simple, but it's going to save you money. It's going to save you. Ultimately, it's going to save you some health because you're going to be eating a little bit better and more healthy. So consider cooking at home more. Be careful about your credit card usage. For me, I cut up my credit cards many years ago, more than a decade ago. Now, if you like using credit cards, that's up to you. If you feel like you want to pay all your bills on credit cards, sure. But listen, be careful about the temptation to use those credit cards because credit cards is just a loan from whatever credit card company it is to you. And so be careful, guys, because credit card debt is at an all-time high in America right now. The average household in America has more than $6,000 in credit card debt. And overall, credit card debt in America is over a trillion dollars. So everybody says that, oh, I pay my credit card off every single month before it's due. But most people aren't really doing that. So be careful about the temptations of credit cards, all right? Even if they give you all these wonderful points and things like that and many incentives. Trust me, you're not outsmarting the credit card companies. They know what they're doing. Just be leery of that moving forward. Number 13 is simply write down your short-term and long-term goals when it comes to your money. Have goals, have plans, have a strategy, have an overall vision, have some goals underneath that vision, and then have some action steps underneath each goal. Because you wanna plan for your finances. Don't just let money happen to you. Control money, be empowered over your money. And you can do that by creating a plan that's gonna help guide you in terms of your next steps moving forward with your personal finances on your financial journey to financial freedom. Now, number 14 is make sure you have an adequate amount of life insurance, right? That it's up to date and you have plenty of it to cover you in case you need to have somebody bury you or in case you have young children or a spouse who's relying on your income. Please get insurance, life insurance, and keep life insurance over the next 20, 30 years, 40 years until you no longer need it anymore because you have plenty of money saved up and invested to cover you. But otherwise, you need life insurance. Make sure you have some, even starting at a younger age. Number 15, get an accountability partner. It could be a spouse, it could be a friend, but you need somebody that's gonna help you stay accountable to what you said you were gonna do with your money. Now, some people may say, hey, I don't need one of those. I don't need an accountability partner. In my opinion, it's always best to have somebody that you can go to, bounce ideas off, bounce questions off, and somebody that's gonna hold you responsible for what you said you were gonna do or what you wrote down, what are your plans, etc. Somebody that's not gonna judge you harshly 
or criticize you, but someone that's going to help you reach your goals. Number 16 is simply take very, very good care of your health. Guys, health is wealth too, right? What good is it to have all this money invested and saved over the course of your lifetime if you're not in the right health to enjoy it? So eat right walk daily or swim daily, right? Get some cardiovascular exercise. Make sure you're eating smaller proportions at the right time, getting plenty of rest, right? Take good care of the one body that you have because when you reach financial freedom or along this path, you wanna be as healthy as possible. Now, number 17 is make sure you're giving. Remember at the top of that budget list where I talked about food and helping other people and also having pay yourself first at the top? You need to be giving and helping and making sure that you're sowing into somebody else, right? That you're helping somebody else. You're giving to a cause. You're using your money, your time, and your energy to help other people. It makes the journey through life much more enjoyable if you can look back on it and say, hey, I helped folks as well, right? So if it's tithing, tithe to a church. If it's almsgiving, give it. If it's just helping other people, help. If it's volunteering your time at a local homeless shelter or domestic violence shelter, do what you can. Just make sure that you're helping and you're giving. And preferably, you're giving some time, some energy, and some money. Now, number 18 is this. What I would tell my younger 20 or 30 year old self is make sure you buy real estate as soon as possible, guys. You want to get in the game because you want to take advantage of the appreciation that comes with real estate. That's one of those assets that you want to have on your net worth statement, guys, real estate as soon as possible, whether it's commercial, residential, single family, multifamily, apartment complex, whatever it may be, you want to get some real estate as soon as possible and put it on a 15-year note if you can. Now, I know mortgage rates have been high, right? Interest rates for mortgages are up there, you know, higher than they've been in years. But still, guys, if you can, you need to find a way to get into some type of real estate as soon as possible. It'll pay off in the long run. Trust me on that. I bought my first piece of rental property when I was 30 years old. If I could, I would have bought my first piece of rental property when I was 20 years old. Now, number 19 is this. Expand your circle. Get around the right people. Get around new people. Get around people that will challenge you to grow, challenge you to get better, challenge you to learn new things, right? Expand your network of people. Now, finally, guys, is number 20. Number 20 is simply enjoy your money. Hey, listen, when you do all the right things with money and you make a lot of good decisions with money, yeah, we're all going to make some mistakes with money. But when you do things the right way with money, you want to enjoy your money and have a little bit of fun with your money as well. You don't have to splurge to have fun with money. Listen, if you spend 10, 15, 20 years doing the right things with money, you'll learn it doesn't take a lot of money to bring a lot of joy because money does not equal happiness. Money does not equal joy. You don't have to splurge to take a mental break, right? Some of the best things in the world are free. Some of the most important things you can do for self-care doesn't cost a whole lot of money. Sometimes they don't cost any money. And I think over the course of time, as you get older and older, I think we learn this more. And we realize that we don't have to be sitting on a beach in Dubai to enjoy ourselves or to have some peace of mind or to be happy or have some joy. Hey, listen, guys, on this video, I just wanted to give you 20 things that I know now that I would go back and tell my younger self if I could. If you're 20 or 30 years old or even 40 years old watching this video, you've got a lot of time. And even if you're over 50 or over 60 watching this video, you've got some time too. As long as you're breathing and as long as you're blinking, you can make some changes and you can do some things differently. And you can learn new things because it's never too late. Hey, if you got anything of value out of this video, guys, please smash the like button for me. Please share this video with someone who you think could really use this type of information, motivation, inspiration, or even encouragement regarding personal finances. Guys, I offer one-on-one -on -one financial mentoring and coaching. If you're looking to grow your current income by adding additional streams of income, or you simply want to maximize your current income and get the most you can out of your money right now, or if you simply just want to become a better manager over your money, a better steward over your current personal finances, I may be a good fit for you. You'll find a link to my one-on-one -on -one personal financial mentoring and coaching below along with a link to my schedule. Please feel free to reach out to me guys. Hey, the best person to take care of the old you 
is the young you. Guys, do me a favor. Take care of yourself and take care of other people. Until the next video, peace.